Hi everyone, my name is Marina and uh, I'm teaching Real Analysis 1 at the University of Kent amongst other modules. So our goal with uh, Real Analysis 1 is to lay out the foundations of real analysis. So some very basic concepts such as sequences, limits, continuity, differentiability, Taylor expansions. Some of these you've seen in school. However, our goal is not to take uh, an approach based on calculations, but to actually focus on really why these concepts are useful and why, why basic facts about them actually hold. And uh, I'd like to demonstrate the importance of proofs via a puzzle. So this is a puzzle that three friends face when they go on an expedition to Antarctica, let's say. So in particular, they start their trip at this red point right here um, at sea level and they choose a specific direction that they have agreed on in advance and they walk towards that direction. They walk straight up, straight down as the land takes them. They don't turn left or right and eventually uh, they cover this uh, bold curve uh, on the top of the mountains. So even though they went with a very old fashioned boat, old looking anyway, they have very modern equipment with them. In particular, they have an instrument that tells them at any point uh, how um, far they went horizontally from their starting point and how high up they are at that moment. Uh, so they have made by the end a full map of this route. And they stop when horizontally they've covered distance of 500 kilometers uh, and they notice that then their height is two kilometers. So along the way, uh, they have uh, logged in all this information from their instruments into a machine. So eventually with this machine, you can uh, input any distance you like from the horizontal distance from the starting point and it, the machine will return to you the height over that distance. Uh, for instance, um, if you input the value of zero, it means uh, you're at distance zero from the starting point, so your height is zero. You're at sea level there. That's what the machine will return. While if you input 500 in kilometers, uh, it means uh, that your height above there is two kilometers, so the machine will return two. All right, so they have this nice machine, and they've also built along the way uh, a lot of shelters. They've actually built one center so shelter at every height of 1.5 kilometers. Uh, and they know, they knew exactly when they were at that height using their instruments. So on their way back, um, they equip these shelters very well. And uh, it's a good thing they did because the weather over there is not as nice as this picture may suggest. This is more like it. And let's say that at some dangerous slope, they're caught by a bad storm and they lose almost everything. They lose all the equipment they need to get down. So they're stuck. They lose all their food. They lose their medical equipment, everything. So they really need to access this equipment from one of the shelters. Only they say, let's say they lose their maps as well. So they have no idea where the shelters were and they're anyway stuck, they cannot go. But let's say that they manage to save two valuable things that will help them. So one thing they save is their machine. Uh, when they input any distance from the starting point, it tells them how high up their route was at that point. Uh, but let's say it has limited battery, this machine. So they can't map again the whole picture. And thankfully, they also have a super powerful drone that um, can go anywhere they like. They can put in coordinates and it can go there and grab them stuff. So ideally, uh, they definitely don't want to drive the drone into the storm. It's a valuable object. So they want to find exactly the position of one of the shelters, just one of them, and take, hover the drone above the storm, take it directly to the shelter the drone will take whatever they need and bring, the, bring it back to them. Okay, so really just for getting the storm and the drone, the drone will take part only at the end. They just need to use their machine 
to find the coordinates of one of the shoulders. So what they do is they think of their root as a graph, this graph right here, um, and they know that at every height of 1.5 kilometers, there is a shoulder. What they really need to find is the x-coordinate of one of the shoulders using this machine. So unfortunately, the machine doesn't work the other way around. You can't input a height to get back the x-coordinate. So they could just try out randomly some x-coordinates, distances from the horizontal distances from the starting point, and see what height they get back and hope that one height will be 1.5. And then they will know they will have found a shelter. However, given that um, the horizontal display displacement can be all the way up to 500,000 meters, this process could need 500,000 steps, essentially, to finish. Uh, and the machine has very limited battery, so they cannot do this. They need to find a more efficient way. And here is an idea. First of all, they try out the height at the midpoint on the x-axis. It's just as good a point as any to try. And the machine tells them that when they travel horizontally a distance to 250 kilometers, their height was something specific, which turns out is below 1.5 kilometers. So what do they know? Uh, their information is about the three red points here on this graph. They know the coordinates only of these three points. And they notice that uh, they start below height 1.5 and at the midpoint, they're still below 1.5. That's what their information is. So there is no guarantee that in the meantime, they went all the way up to 1.5. So they cannot guarantee this way that um, there will be a shelter in the first half of this route. So they can completely ignore the first half of this route. And they notice that in the second half, uh, above the midpoint, the height is below 1.5. But when they reach the end, it is above 1.5. So they know that in the meantime, they must have crossed height 1.5 and therefore build a shelter there. Uh, and this way, they can just focus on the second half of the route. They know definitely that the shelter exists there. So you see, just with one trial in the machine, they wiped out 250 kilometers from their considerations. And now they can keep doing the same thing. They look at this smaller part of the route. They look at the midpoint down there. Uh, it is a distance 375 kilometers from the starting point, and the machine tells them that the height over there is above 1.5 kilometers. So they noticed that when they were at the start of this subroute, they were below 1.5 kilometers, and at the middle of it, they were above. And therefore, they know that in the meantime, in the, the first half, let's call it half of this route, uh, they must have crossed height 1.5 kilometers. So they can completely ignore the second half of the route. We know it does contain two shelters, but it doesn't matter. The point is that there is definitely at least one shelter in the first half. They, they, our friends know this. Okay, and they can focus on this much, much smaller part of the route. And they can keep going. Let's look at the midpoint of this subroute. Uh, logging in the machine the specific distance from horizontally from the starting point, they get height below 1.5. So at the start of this subroute and at the end, they are still below 1.5 kilometers. There is no guarantee that there will be a shelter in the middle. Uh, definitely there isn't one in this case. Uh, however, in the uh, second part of this route, they start from below 1.5 and end up above 1.5. So there is a shelter in the middle. They know that. And you see that they have really diminished a lot the area they have to search. And they can keep going forever, or, or at least uh, until they are happy with the possible error. Uh, they look at the midpoint here. Both uh, the left end point and the midpoint give height below 1.5. So they know nothing about the left half of this picture, but they know that there will be a shelter on the right because 
they start from below 1.5 and end up above 1.5. Uh, and one more uh, effort like this, checking the midpoint now, uh, the machine returns height below 1.5, so they know that at the midpoint they were below 1.5, at the right end point they were above 1.5, so there must definitely exist a shelter in the middle. We only look at the right half of this route. You see the red points that I've uh, put on the x-axis are their inputs in the machine. There are very, very few. There are five right now. And they have still managed to uh, eliminate a lot of space from their search. They can keep going this way. You can see essentially they have found the shelter right here. Uh, there is, um, so the, these uh, steps that they take are um, essentially found in a dyadic form. You always look at the midpoint of some interval. Um, and therefore, uh, we can, they can finish this process in at most a uh, log of 500,000 steps. Log with base 2 of the number of uh, meters horizontally that they have. While uh, if they looked randomly, uniformly at random, say, points on the x-axis, uh, they would have needed perhaps way, way more steps. Okay, so um, what has really been happening here? Uh, what we have is the root, which really is a continuous function. It's the graph of some continuous function. And we know that at the left end point, uh, the value is below 1.5, the height. And at the right end point, the value, the height, is above 1.5. So what we're looking for is a point uh, here in the domain that has value exactly 1.5. This is simply a constructive proof of the intermediate value theorem. This is what we have done. We have found a constructive proof of the intermediate value theorem. And in class, actually, we'll see exactly the same proof, just more formally, for every continuous function. So what is the point here? I could say that uh, proofs save lives. It's true. But uh, just to keep it more light, I'll just say that proofs give substance to what we do. They give meaning to our statements. Simply knowing stuff without really thinking why they're true is not enough. So the proof right here gave us a process of how to find something. It was very useful. And in this class, we'll try to see uh, a lot of concepts along these lines. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the winter. <laughs>